So, back to these same two casinos that I keep hitting up. I'm going to just keep playing there until they boot me out. And this is going to be a two-day trip. So... Up feet. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Against the six, too. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, You didn't have that much with them, or yeah, yeah. Can I fix my chair? Usually, if they only buy in 20, that's yeah, about what they're paying in for 40, maybe, but typically, how it goes. I'm about buying them for 20. I, I used to be a dealer once upon a time, and uh, guy buys in for $20 at a $25 minimum uh, Baccarat table, okay? <laughs> and he uses his player's card. So because that was strange, 
because surveillance doesn't watch much unless they see, you know, unless they are told something's weird, you know. So the floor called up, said, you know, this guy seems a little strange, you know. So he started watching him, and he stares at the table forever, and then finally works up the nerve, and he reaches across and tries to grab a stack of yellow chips, which are a thousand each. And the dealer does something I would never would have done. The dealer actually grabs the guy's arm and tries to pull him in, and he drops about half of them, but he got away with like, I don't know, 15,000 probably. And ran out the door, no one stopped him. Security let him run right past him, you know. But they knew, he used a player's card where he gave us his real name and his real address. That was stupid. <laughs> and, he buy, and he buys in for 20 at a $25 table. It's like, uh, you know, what? <laughs> why buy in? Exactly. At that point, why not just run up to the table? Right. You you you, you decided that you were going to spend twenty dollars in order to pull off this heist. I mean, why? Just grab the chips. Make it look a little less suspicious. But, but he wasn't even sitting down. No, no he did sit down. He did sit down, but. Too bad. How you doing? Okay. It was bad. It finally got good. Come on. Ah. Shuffle. All right. So I actually got myself a comped room. No, not from the casino. Comped from my points. So here we are at the lovely motel suite. So this is the kind of comped rooms I'm getting now. Used to stay in fancy Suites on the strip. Now we are here at this roadside motel where you could park right in front of your door to get in, which is convenient. Not a bad looking room. Got a little desk here. So, microwave, fridge. What else could you want? Looks clean. You know, I'll take it. It's free through uh, my points through uh, Wyndham's rewards. So if you stay in enough hotel rooms, eventually you get one or two free. This is the second time I'm staying in one of these free. So it's not exactly uh, the uh, honeymoon suite at Caesar's Palace, but uh, it'll do. back against the wall offensively. So right, Diggs wide left, Herb Smith Jr. slot left. All right, so here's the thing. I'm going to level with you guys. 
I play almost every single day or at least four days a week and as you know I release these videos of my real blackjack life once a week so obviously this happened over a month ago and I don't know exactly if I won or lost during that little session there I'm heading over now to another casino as you can see and gonna play for a little while here spoiler alert there's gonna be something very interesting that's gonna happen inside the casino that you guys are gonna to get to see not in this next scene at this casino but coming up before the end of this video so you might wanna stay tuned if you guys like this smash that like button please subscribe and click the notifications so that you can find out about the next episode of my real blackjack life you guys seem to like this so i'm going to keep doing it for a while and maybe intersperse some other videos too i can't believe it i just checked the video and i didn't have the sound on on the video and i didn't have a good shot of the table either so you just missed and all i can do is tell you about it now while it's still fresh in my mind i split tens i was playing two hands I had, I don't even remember what I had on the first hand. I don't know, I had like an 18 on the first hand, and then I had a pair of 10s. I split the 10s against the dealer 6 monster count. It was huge. The count, true count was 10 at least. And so I split the 10s. I got a 19 on the first hand and an ace on the second one. So. A 9 and an ace came out, 19 and 21 for my two hands. Dealer busted and, you know, paid the whole thing, and that was the end of the round. So I decided to make my exit. The, the pit boss came over, asked me for the second time if I wanted a card, um, and this and that, you know. Um, and it's no coincidence they're asking me that right after I split 10s. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. I'm going back in now. Yes, mate. I know. I tried to get back before it started. But... What's that? Oh yeah. Too many. That's way more than 21, that's all I know. <laughs> Good luck. 
There you go. Nice hit. Oh, I don't have to. Rid of them once they're out there, they don't blow. We got two of them from that one. I don't know. <laughs> Three green.
they taking your cardio today? No, I don't have one. <laughs> Thank you. I think I took that five. That's fine, I'll just sit there.
I'll be back in a little bit. Oh, uh, I can feel a purple in here. Yeah. Don't get too excited. I'm still down quite a bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> there was three purple at one time. <laughs> Five, eight, seventy-five, eighty-five, nine. All right. So, total between the two little mini sessions was two and a half hours and negative three hundred ten dollars. Um, felt like worse than that for some reason. Maybe because I was up a couple hundred at first. So, no biggie. Three hundred bucks. So go over to the other place, try to get it back. Um, got a lot of time. It's only 6.30 and this is 6.30 p.m. and this is a two-day trip, so this is long from over. So, we got a lot of time to get that 300 back plus a lot more. Positive thinking, right? Which uh, gets you exactly uh, nowhere, but <laughs> It certainly probably doesn't hurt. All right. I'm not one for the positive mental attitude thing. That, to me, that sounds like a, a lot of hocus pocus. You know, maybe that works, um, you know, in a physical sport or something like that, you know, where, you know, confidence is important. Um, I mean, I, I guess... It could help in terms of just playing right, you know, making sure that you have the confidence that you're going to win in the long run and believe in the math and stay confident and positive in that way so that you don't underbet, which is a real big temptation when you're losing. Actually, it's always a temptation to underbet. That's, that's the thing about this. And... I think if I was if I was a gambler, if I was if I loved gambling, if I was like, you know, compulsive gambler or something like that, then I would have the opposite inclination that I have. In other words, I have to fight the urge to reduce my bets both when I'm winning and when I'm losing. When I'm winning, the urge is to reduce my bets to sort of maintain my lead like the way football teams play conservatively when they're ahead which I don't really think is a good idea either by the way if I can insert my opinion about football because they got the lead by playing aggressively and now that they're in the lead they start playing conservatively and a lot of times that's exactly what gives the other team a chance but I'm no football coach, so who am I to second guess their decisions? You know, I, I, I probably would laugh at them if, if they tried to coach me on how to play blackjack. So they should laugh at me for trying to tell them how to play football. They, they know more about it than I do. But that's just my opinion. And so when this train here and you know it might not even be coming at all hmm so I think we're gonna go around a different way because I don't think this train is coming you guys can probably just about figure out where I am based on what I'm gonna do here in regards to this train because this is one of these situations where this train stops right over here. Let's see how I get. I should be using the GPS, I suppose. The train has to stop over there while they move the bridge. There's a bridge that the train goes over. It goes over the river. There's movable bridges, and if a ship is coming through, then the train has to just sit there and wait. So that train is never going to move, and so I have to find the highway entrance, basically, which I think I have to kind of make a U-turn kind of thing.
So anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so the urge when you're winning is to reduce your bets to maintain your lead. And when you're losing, you really want to reduce your bets because you feel like you're going to keep losing. But that's not logical. What's logical is playing according to the count. And you're going to... You're going to keep losing if the count is negative, but you're going to start winning if the count is positive. And like I've said before, a lot of times people perceive streaks and things like that. And then when you learn to count cards, you find out that, well, yeah, there was a winning streak because the count stayed positive. And there was a losing streak because the count stayed negative. And so a lot of things start to make sense. One of the frustrating things that I just was dealing with just now is I kept getting 14. I don't know how many 14s I got. And as a card counter, when the count gets high, 14 is like the worst hand. It's worse than 15 or 16. Because with 15 or 16 against, say, a 10 or a 9, if the count is really high, you can just stand on that. But... There's really never a good time to stand on a 14. You should never stand on a 14, no matter how, how high the count is, unless you're using some sort of count that tracks sevens. And I, and I know some card counters have actually done a side count of sevens, just, I think, just because of the frustration with the 14. If you knew how many sevens there were, if you knew that there was, that you had depleted the sevens, that there wasn't very many sevens, then, and I have to go north, so the only, I have to like go down here and then turn around. This is amazing that I have to do this one. This is the only way to get past this train. So, if you knew that there was very little sevens left, and it was a super high count, then I suppose there might be a time when Standing on 14 would make a, would make sense, but I don't track the sevens, so I have to hit my 14 because I might get one of those sevens. I'm probably not going to get anything less than seven if it's a super high count, but I might get a seven, and that has happened to me. And the 14 against the 10 in a high count is even more than normal likely to lose. You know, it's it's very unlikely that the dealer has got something less than a 7 underneath the 10. Because there aren't any small cards left, and you already know that. So, that's why the 14 really, really sucks. Yeah. Better hit it again. Hey, look at that. <laughs> What's that? Oh, time is it? Seven. I know. You didn't take it. I know. Never said I was smart. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be here if I was smart. <laughs> That's a good point. Good thing there's stupid people in the world, huh? Yes. <laughs> Sucker born every. Sucker born every day, they say, but I think it's a lot more than one. Actually, my favorite quote that's along those lines is from uh, was 
Michel Mencken, I think. Could be wrong about that. Uh, so 60. He said, nobody ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American people. <laughs> reach the end. <laughs> Not cold enough for me to wear a coat yet. <laughs> no. It seemed cold this morning. It was only 37 degrees. It was in Clinton. Clean the pickup out. Sedan. Rare for those eight split sort. There you go. I don't know how they 15. do it. With tips up there. Yeah. Bribery works. Good for you. Okay, I've been paying you. Well, <laughs> you. well that's why he tipped you. Fifty-two, fifty-one. We're gamblers. You know, we got to complain no matter what. Yeah. We're we never happy. Right. We've got that right. We we never ever happy. When we win, we didn't bet enough. It's a catch-22, though. You have to deal with that. It's a catch-22 because if we weren't like that, that would mean we're intelligent. But if we were intelligent, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> I've kind of come to the conclusion I'm not very good at either one. I can't outguess cars or women either one. <laughs> yeah. I can't win a blackjack. I've never been married. Well... At least you recognize your limitations. <laughs> I mean, so you, you got it half right. You decided not to play the marriage game, but yet you're still here playing blackjack. <laughs> that was your nine.
Four. You have a six. You have fifteen. Ten. There we go. Well, twenty-two. It'll work. Part of the All reason, right. Part of the reason there was a painter in Nebraska who was out there for ten years. And there was a painter, commercial painter, painted grain bins and farmsteads and stuff. And I took his advice. He was older than he was. Well, about my age now, but he seemed older than me. He was 65 or 70 then. And he said he dated this gal in high school. And he came from a well to do family and he couldn't ever keep her happy. So, so I was 15. I wasn't smart. He said he. She come from a pretty well to do family and couldn't ever keep her happy and she said uh, went to high school dance and met this other gal and he wound up taking her home and left his date there. <laughs> and he said it's lasted for like forty or fifty years. He said she never had Thinking much. About it? Really? Okay. Double ten. Seventeen, thirteen. He said she never had much. Eighteen. But he said, Come on. Oh, it looks so promising. You gotta be kidding me. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'm putting a hand in. You don't mind, do you? No. Because I gotta change something after that debacle there. So she had the 16. There we go. The gal he wound up marrying from that high school that he took home that night. Never had much. Thank you. And he said, she's easily satisfied and can keep her happy. And he said, my advice to you is, he said, all right, somebody poor and what you are. And he said, you'll be all right. And I said, Gary, that's why I've never got married. I can't find anybody poor and what I am. <laughs> Still have Well, that's a good problem to have, though. No, I mean, I'm off the floor. Uh, I can't hold on here. Can I do it like this? Can I just do it for both of them? Okay. <laughs> it's a push anyway, so. Yeah. I thought to break it all down. Like, yeah. You know, right. Come on. 21. What a six up. Oh. Unbelievable. This way it's been going all night. As soon as I start betting big. Yeah. Good luck on the ace. There you go. 16. It's called the bus cart. That's not a bust. I'm not even going to go all in with this crap because then I'm just going to get mad when I win. Ugh. I'll go all green. It's fine. Yeah.
Sorry, that was my fault. Well, it was. You should have had a pin coming out from the muscle. I see why it stayed. You would have busted if I would have hit. Oh, you would have had 20? Yeah. Come on. How do you do that every time? Wow. 16 turns into 21 every time. I know. I'm not blaming you. <laughs> it's not your fault. I just, it's my fault. I'm the one betting the money. All green again? Yeah. 500. Green. Thank you. I told you I'm stupid, but I'm not dumb enough to think it matters who pulls the cards out of the shoe. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, sure, yeah. Of course, you got it. Not there. I could lose the hard way. Oh, really? I was looking for your seven. Yeah, what's up? Hey, we're gonna ask if you not play blackjack here any longer. You have reason to believe that you're coming tomorrow. You can't play, so you can play tables. You can't play uh, blackjack. Is there another way to play besides counting cards? Um, yeah, there's several other ways. Other ways to play. So no more blackjack. You can play any other games with no blackjack. Understood? All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, All right. So as you just saw, uh, no more blackjack at this fine establishment, just like I predicted might happen. <clears throat> I knew it was going to happen, too. I, And I'll tell you exactly when I knew it was going to happen. I don't know if this is on the video yet or not. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm almost positive uh, I got video of them asking me not to play blackjack anymore. But there was a dealer, and he had been a dealer there for a long time, and uh, the floor manager came over and told him to straighten out his trip chip tray because, and obviously, surveillance was watching him. And he even made a point to tell me that, well, apparently, obviously, they're watching me. And it's like, well, <laughs> they weren't watching the dealer. They're not watching a veteran dealer at a nickel table. Uh, they were watching me. So I decided that it would make good video to get thrown out, really, partially is what I was thinking. Also, I thought, I decided that, you know what, if they're going to throw me out, I'd rather have them throw me out now because it's going to happen anyway. Why why bar myself, right? Um, Colin Jones talks about it in his book, don't bar yourself, and I think he's right. Don't go and ban yourself because all that's going to happen is I'm going to make another trip all the way out here, spend money to get out here and time, and then they're going to bar me like right away when I walk in the door. That's happened to me before. So it's far better to get banned now than to get banned, you know, later on down the road. So just let them go ahead and ban me. Now, the only question is, what's going to happen at the other place? So do I do the same thing at the other place? I mean, they probably just called the other place and the other place has been suspicious of me already anyway. So they'll probably send over a picture, um, you know, 
part of me says, well, I should at least like change my shirt. You know, I do have a change of clothes with me. Um, you know, so do I go back to the hotel? Do I come play tomorrow? Um, or do I just go there now and get it over with? You know? Um, because what else am I going to do now tonight? It's 11.30. I can go back to the hotel. Um, I don't know. The trouble is, if I come back tomorrow with a different shirt, the other shirt that I have is not conducive to getting a good video for you guys. <laughs> That's the problem. I lost 480 bucks, but I don't consider it a uh, total disaster because uh, I was able to play there for six hours wearing a disguise, <laughs> kind of a lame disguise, but a disguise nonetheless, and got no heat at all. And this is a place that I've been backed off from before. And this place is awesome. Okay, this place, I, I was having trouble with uh, the camera, so uh, the spy camera, you know, I, so I couldn't get any video inside there. But I wish you guys would have seen this penetration. The penetration at this place was, they were cutting off half a deck, half a deck out of six decks. So we're playing five and a half out of six decks. And that is that is phenomenal. That that's that's better than than a deeply penetrated double deck in a lot of cases. If you have a double deck and they're cutting off uh, half a deck, the penetration is actually not as good as six decks with half a deck cut off because it's percentage wise. You understand? So you know, and there's some advantages to double deck, but this six deck game is just amazing. The rules are not as good as they could be. You can't re-split your aces. Uh, they do hit their soft 17. And you can double after split, but that's about it. You know, there's no other great rules. Uh, but with that kind of penetration, you know, the table minimum is $10, which I've been playing $5 minimum. But with, with that kind of penetration, I don't even mind the $10. And I could only, you know, so I wonged out. If it got really negative, I would leave. But I actually was able to play $5 in a hand, and here's how. This is, this is great. This is how I love these side bets, okay? There was a guy that wanted to make the, the poker side bet on my hand. And so I said, sure, I don't care. You know, and every time he won, he would pay me five dollars just for the opportunity to you know to bet there so it was like a free bet for me uh, I could win five dollars uh, and I could not lose anything so of course I'm gonna accept that every time and then what's even better is even it's a ten dollar table but you just have to bet a max a, a total of ten dollars between the two bets well by him betting five on the side bet that actually is considered my bet. And technically, I don't even have to give him the money. I could keep the money. That's the way the, the rules are at this casino. And in a lot of casinos, in most casinos, that's the rule. You know, it's, it's on my bet, it's, it's my bet. There's exceptions to that, like I told you about. And we got technical difficulties. So I got cut off there. What I wanted to say basically is, first of all, by getting a free bet essentially on that three card poker sucker bet I'm able to basically play through all the negative counts because even when the count is negative the fact that I'm getting a free bet on a long shot it's a long shot but it's gonna hit once in a while alright it'll probably hit something some kind of payoff one out of a hundred times probably more I don't know what the real odds are, but I'm sure it's more than one one in a hundred, one percent. And so, even if it goes down to negative two, and the house has a two percent edge over me, if it's one in fifty that it hits something, I'm breaking even on that. So, by somebody making a side bet for me every time, 
I'm able to add enough EV that it's not costing me anything to sit through those negative counts. And then because he's betting five dollars on the side bet I can then bet just five dollars on the main blackjack bet and that can, is considered at that table to be a full ten dollar bet. All right this was a terrible trip though overall when I got backed off or barred from blackjack I was down 700 just at that casino. For the total trip I lost about 1500 so I got barred and I lost $1,500. That's about as bad as it gets. My bankroll took a serious hit, but I am undeterred. Catch me next time. May the count be with you.